yes guys good evening my name is crypto keep and today i want to talk about how beginners can make money with cryptocurrencies in this lesson is beginners oriented so it's basically directed at extreme beginners if you are new to cryptocurrencies and you are looking to make or earn a living with cryptocurrencies then this video is a very good one to watch i had the opportunity to speak at a program which was recently conducted and this was what i spoke about so i decided to bring it on youtube for my viewers who are beginners and who we like to know ways in which they can make money with cryptocurrencies so there are several ways in which you can hear from cryptocurrencies the list is in excel table there are a lot of ways in which you can eventually make and actually make money with cryptocurrencies so i have listed a few here which i think they are the most common right now not even right now they are the more common way most common way of making money with cryptos and the first one are hair drops as a beginner into the cryptocurrency space you must have done a little bit of research and by that research you would have heard of air of airdrops so most of these things i've just been briefing you speaking about what they are and maybe a little bit of advantages and disadvantages and the particular one in which i do so most of these things you might already know and or you might not i just wanting to know what they are and now you can get into them and then the next way you can make money in cryptocurrency is by investing or rather let me say investments and under investing we have staking and coin farming or rather as it is called yield farming then we have ICOs which are initial coin offerings then we have IEOs which has initial exchange offerings and then we have as it is commonly called in crypto ordinary this is basically when you hold onto something you buy something and you hold on it onto it for a long period of time then the next one i will briefly talk about is nfts that is a non-fungible tokens i do not know much about nft i traded it two years ago i did participate in nft two years ago but then i have my own reservations but it's still a very good way in what wish or in which people to make money and then we have technical trading and by technical trading, what I mean here is technical analysis. We have different types of trading, right? We have technical trading, which is TA, technical analysis. And we have fundamental trading, which is fundamental analysis. But when we are talking about fundamentals, then I reserve my fundamental aspects as an investment idea or ways in which you can invest. But when you are trading actively, then you are more of a technical trader than a fundamental trader. So let's get it started. As you know, by definition, airdrops in the cryptocurrency space is a marketing strategy which is devised by startups. And this involves distributing coins or tokens to people in order to create and promote awareness for their brands and projects and what this means is airdrops is virtually the the brand or the project makers the developers are giving you a part of the tokens in which they are creating as an incentive so you can as well do something for them in return and there are many ways in which people go by this or in which brands go by this. Let's assume that I want to create a token today or tomorrow. I do not know anybody, right? And I want my coin to be out there. I want people to adopt my coin. I want people to be able to trade it because it is when you trade it or when it is available for trading and adoption, that is when the value will really come into it. I may have the tokens, I might have created a project, I have the tokens, and if nobody uses it, then it is invaluable. 
it has no value. But the moment people start adopting it and using it, then the value starts to come with the law of supply and demand in place. So when I create my token, I will give everybody or every interested person some amount of token as concluded or as decided by me. I may choose to give you 100 token, on which is 100 coins. I may choose to give you 200 or 50 or 10. Depending on what I think the value will be in the next future, nearest future. So this is me giving you my tokens for free so that you can it on promote and create awareness for my token. And most people, they do this over Twitter where the brands ask them that, okay, I've put up a tweet. You should retweet this. Then you should like the, the tweet. You should retweet it. You should like it. You should make comments and something like that. So it's basically creating awareness for that project. So people can get to see it and the more people get to see it, the more people get to adopt it if they like the fundamentals of that project. So it's like me giving you my token as a payment for promoting and creating awareness for my brand. So that is basically what airdrops are. And airdrops are the best way to make money with cryptocurrencies without spending a, a dime. And this is true. You do not have to spend any money of yours to earn from airdrops. There are many airdrops, especially from good, good projects that you just have to maybe send them ID, verify yourself with them, then retweet their post on Twitter or any other platforms, then like and comment on it, join their Telegram community, and whatever they wish, they do not require money from you. Legitimate crypto airdrop brands will never ask you for payment or seek any capital from you. All they do is, okay, retweet and all those things, verify yourself. And once you've done that, they will credit you with the tokens. That means you are getting the token for virtually free. I'm using the word virtually because you still have to verify yourself by giving them your IDs and identity which some people do not like. So once you get those airdrops, after a while, if you are a good person who can hold on to airdrops, some do, do yield in value. Some can start at 0 0.1 cents or 0 0.10 cents at the time of launch. And over a period of time, they can rise to $1, $2, and even much more. We have Trust Wallet Token did airdrop recently. I think they started with 26 cents. And before a month or two, it was trading $1. I got 100 TWT Trust Wallet Token. And by the time it was trading for $1, then the value was $100. So I got $100 for free. If I then add on to it far much longer, I think it is worth more than 200 now for that 100 token. And it is basically for free. So you can earn good money with airdrops. But one thing I do not like about them or about some airdrops, not all, is that some do require you to verify yourself with your ID cards. So I don't know, I'm not comfortable with giving my ID cards to a random company online. Now, when it comes to staking, this is the way to go right now. I'm farming. And like I've said, staking is a way of any money or rather rewards for holding and locking your crypto coin for a period of time without accessing it. So this your funds that you have locked away will serve as a node on the network for confirming other transactions. And you get rewarded for that. Staking, as we know, is coming from the proof of stake that is network algorithm for confirmation of transactions rather than the proof of work that we currently have with bitcoin and due to some reasons many many crypto brands are ad adopting the proof of stake 
where you stake your money and in return they give you reward just like when you have your proof of work because proof of work is energy dependent and it takes a lot of energy just to do what it does it is a mining process by the way and i have experience with mining i once was a miner i mined bitcoin i had my own bitcoin farm so i'm experienced with mining as well then we have now farming mostly called e-farming and this is similar to staking but more of lending your capital in crypto to provide liquidity for decentralized finance defi and it is for the rewards and other incentives as well just like in staking you do that for rewards but you are locking your funds in staking why in yield farming you are basically giving your funds to an exchange platform a DeFi platform so they can use that money you are giving them to supply liquidity to traders on their platform and in return they will pay you interest every exchange has different interest rates but this is what is running at this particular moment farming 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 everywhere so staking and farming is a way of making your assets work for you and to fully benefit from either staking or farming a huge chunk of capital is essential the higher the risk the higher the reward right so if you have a lot of money to give to all these DeFi platforms then if you even if you get 10 percent interest on them then 10 percent interest on one thousand dollars is not the same as 10 percent interest on one hundred dollars so that is where you need a huge amount of capital to be able to benefit hugely from either staking or farming farming always tends to have via apy which is annual percentage yield or rewards but also more risky than staking it is risky in the essence that you can give your money to a DeFi platform maybe a new platform you lend them your money and the rug but in staking you can stake right from your own wallet either your mobile phone wallet or your pc wallet or even from some on some exchanges so that one is safer to stake than farming but farming pays more and ico 2017 we had the ico craze and nowadays we have ieos and even some id holes so ICOs and ieos are both initial offerings right and bet the ico is conducted by the project brand while ieo is conducted by an exchange both are very good ways for an investor to buy the tokens at the early stage and very cheap before they are listed on any exchange for trading so that is basically ICOs and IEO. Some projects are coming into the crypto space and they want to launch. After giving airdrops, if they give airdrops, not all brands give airdrops. But some, we conduct an ICO to raise funds. So at that part, at that time of raising funds, you as an investor, seeing opportunities in that project, seeing the the fundamentals of that project you decide to buy at ico price and you have in mind that once they get listed on very good exchanges the price will rise and even if the price do not rise due to listing on exchanges over time due to their fundamentals the price will rise so you invest at those initial initial stages and hope that their price will rise and this is where holding comes into play. And H O D L, Odney, that is a crypto term for long time investments. And this requires a lot of fundamentals and research. Just like you need fundamentals to be able to hold good airdrops, you need a good fundamentals to be able to participate in good ICOs because not all the projects are good, some are scammy projects. Likewise, IEOs, but IEOs are better trusted than ICOs nowadays. 
so they require a lot of fundamentals and you can just choose to go into an exchange and buy a coin that has already been listed and a project that has been available or that has been around for a while so you can read on their fundamentals assess them fundamentally and in any other way you can evaluate them the team the project itself their roadmap and every other thing you assess them and you choose to buy when the value drops and at a price line you consider that you have a bargain price then you buy and then you can hold for a period of time ranging from three months six months one year two years even five years so that is basically ordinary but also you can also decide to hold, hold good ICOs and good airdrops if you believe the fundamentals is very good so similar to participating in ICOs and IEOs but without the risk of funny or scam projects that is when you buy already existing coins which have very good fundamentals like many are buying into ETH, Ethereum, Bitcoin, BNB, FTT, Avas, AXS. You can also choose to do your own research on those available and existing coins and buy into the ones you think they have strong fundamentals. So, ODNI encapsulates ICOs, IEOs, airdrops, taking farming, and even NFTs. Because to even buy NFTs, you have to do your fundamentals about the projects you want to buy their NFTs. And now we talk about NFTs. So NFTs are data stored on the blockchain, which can be unique and specific and can be sold and traded, but can never be replaced. This can be digitalized version of anything you value, anything at all. But remember the keyword, digitalized version. You can meet your own NFTs and offer it up for sale. Many think can be, fee can be a little and can on some networks and can be high on others. Like Ethereum networks, we have high fees. But on Polygon networks, we have low fees. I do not know of FTS and Binance fees right now, so I cannot say, but I believe they will be low compared to Ethereum networks. And if you choose to meet your own NFT, you can just design yours and put it up for sale. But people might not be buying because they do not know you and they do not know how valuable it is. So people prefer to buy into some projects which are basically NFT projects who are already popular and they have the hyping on social medias. Like I write here, or like I wrote, popular NFT projects are the go-to NFTs for good profit margins when trading NFTs. And that is because the companies are out there, they are doing promotion, doing everything they can do so they can get people to buy in. When these projects are launching, you can mint them on their platforms. Once you pay for the minting fees, you get to own them for cheap. So you still have to hold it for a while. You can sell it after a week, two weeks, a month, two months, depending on how you evaluate their fundamentals. But as we've seen in recent times, people get to sell LFTs, they mint for $100, for thousands of dollars some even millions so you just have to watch for the good projects that are ready and then you can participate i'm not good in nft because like i said earlier i traded nft two years ago even last year and some of the nfts i bought last year i still have them on sale till now nobody is buying so i'm not fond of nfts And this is where we come to technical trading. And this is the most common and active way of making money from cryptocurrencies. This requires a lot of studies and time. You will need to study a lot and time. You have to be patient to trade. So, 
it can be demanding and it is the most impactful way to make money from cryptocurrencies as you are happy making the money it doesn't wear you out it can wear you emotionally and psychologically but when you have good profits you are happy when you spend those money you are smiling because you believe you have worked to make the money it's not easy money and it's not quick money so you want to be right on your toes when trading with technical analysis it doesn't require heavy fundamentals like in investing but it needs a very sound understanding of the technicalities and tools to analyze price behaviors based on past price data and hindsight like we do call press past data hindsight this image below represents price data past and are called japanese candlesticks so as a beginner you might open a chart and see things that look like this and get confused thinking these are statistics but then if you take the time to understand what this means and what they do then you will love the art of analysis and they will become simple to you like i do say you do not know something because you are not interested in it but once you have interest in something no matter how hard that thing tends to be you will very well understand and know it so this is also the candlesticks i have taken it one one like we have the green candlesticks which we have the up movement from here to here there are a bunch of greens each one is a candlestick combine combine together they are candlesticks japanese candlesticks and then we have the red ones all, all of them make something so i've picked one and one to explain in the next slide so here we have each candlestick represent price movement within a certain period of time so if you see a candlestick like this depending on the time frame at which you are watching them it can represent a minute time frame or which means everything that happened within that one minute is contained in this price candle or it can be one hour which means everything that happened in the past one hour is contained in this one candle it can also be one day which means everything that happened within the past one day is contained within this one candle so getting into it there are four levels which are very important in each candles either green or red green means up while red means down and the important levels are the open high low and close so I have marked them here, we have the open, that is where the solid line begins. And the close is where the red, I mean, the solid line ends. In a green formation or in a green candle like this, if a, an asset starts to trade at a particular price line in a day, assuming this is a daily candle, so for that day, the price starts to trade at this particular price line, then it's comes down to sell or buy at this particular low price which means the assets crashed in price to a lower price than the price at which it began trading for the day then during the course of that day it went as high as this very high but at the close of that day when that day ended and you moved into another day then the price ended up trading at this particular price line that is why you have the open, the low, the high, and the close. And that means the price at which the hair cell started trading, either you are watching a daily candle, then for that day, if it is a one hour candle, then for that hour. And then the close price is the price at which it closed for that day or that hour. While the low and the highs are the lowest price that asset was sold for and the highest price that asset was sold for and the highs and the lows are called the weeks or the distance between the open to the low and the distance between the close to the highs they are called the weeks some people call them shadows and some people call them tails whereas the solid body 
the solid parts you see that are in the wicks or the shadows, they are called the candle bodies. The same thing but inverse is for the down candle. And you have the open on top here because it is a down candle, which means price for that asset crashed or dropped in value for that particular period of time. So assuming this were to be a daily candle, then the price started trading at this particular open price here. It went as high at this price here for that particular period, which is a day now. Then it came to trade for as low as this price here. Then it ended up closing at this price now here. So for that period of time, which is a day for that day, it opened at an higher level went higher, sold for higher price, then came down, sold for much lower, then came up a bit again, and then closed that particular day at this particular level. But the close of that day is lower than the price at which the assets open trading. So the difference, if the close is lower than the open, then it is a drop in value. So you see a red candle. And the solid part, is the same as this it's called the candle bodies why the higher the distance between the open to the high and the close to the lows are the wicks shadows or tears and when you see a series of candles like this or like this from this explanation made here you should be able to tell what happened here so it just means a price this red candle here opened here Closed here, made a low here, made an eye here, then closed for that particular period. Then the next one opened at where the red one closed. Because it is continuous. There is no holiday, no vacation, no breaks. So it opened right at that price line, the previous candle closed. Made a low, made an eye, then closed. Then opened again, made a low, made an eye, closed. But the value at which it closed is greater or higher than the value at which it, it opened. So it becomes green for positive change in value. Why these ones are red for negative change in value. And that is what you have here. Here you have continuous three candlesticks which are negative change in values. So they keep closing in red for those three periods why here you have continuous pos positive change in value so they are green so after you have a sound understanding of candlesticks the next thing will be to find areas of interest so you can find your areas of interest using either the candlesticks or price action patterns or we also have sharp patterns do not confuse chart patterns to candlesticks or price action patterns. Candlestick patterns mean individual candles or two candles combined together or three candles combined together. That gives you candlesticks pattern. But chart patterns means the full chart. It the full chart a lot of candlesticks coming together to give you a pattern. So that is the difference between candlesticks pattern or sh and chart patterns. Then we have horizontal support and resistance, diagonal support and resistance, which are trend lines. We have supply and demand. Then we have indicators. So these are everything he wants to pay attention to, or you want to know depending on the type of trader you want to be. Either you want to be a price action trader, or you want to be someone who trades with indicators. But these are what you should have basic knowledge of, no matter how you choose to trade. And areas of interest are areas of price line which you would enter the market and also exit the market. You enter the market by taking a buy in a long trade and exit the market by taking take profit or by stop loss. So after this, you will need to learn the most important lesson in technical analysis and invest in a sale. Or let me write, let me say anything that has to do with investment either by technical trading or fundamental trading, this is the greatest topic in it. And that is risk and money management. That is where you get to learn about risk to reward ratio, position sizing, stop losses, and capital preservation. It doesn't end there. So trading is a continuous learning. learning, learning. How do I say it? 
it's a continuous learning stage where you get to learn a lot of things though you do not need to learn everything you just need to have an idea of the most important things and learn how to implement it and incorporate it into your style of trading so this is where i come to an end so as you can see trading cryptocurrencies with technical analysis can be very high rewarding and it is very simple but also very demanding so you need a lot of learning and patience as a beginner patience is a key word you have to be patient patient you can choose to get started as an investor by researching for good projects and holding their tokens while you learn how to trade and flip profits on a daily basis <clears throat> why technical analysis comes with high risk staking your assets and huge farming comes with a much lesser risk and a lot of peace of mind trust me when i say staking a yield for me as peace of mind than when you are trading with technical analysis you will soon find out don't worry and airdrops has no particular risk because you are not spending anything you are not putting out any money to ask risk so they have some particular risk especially if you are comfortable with sharing your identity with an unknown company online so that is where i come to the end of this beginner intros to making money with cryptocurrencies my name is crypto keep and thank you for watching